Atlantic City, a gambler's paradise. Pull a lever, press your luck, throw the dice and watch the combinations fly. The same can be said about boxing. It was a safe bet that a cruiserweight showdown would prevail as Bobby Chaz takes on Bosh Ali in our first bout. Chaz is anxious to prove that he no longer rides the roller coaster that dominated his early career. The newly crowned WBA title holder appears to be a rough and ready champion who sat on a big payday with Thomas Hearns. But first, he must get past tonight's opponent, Bosh Ali. Ali carries the Nigerian nickname Aja Gumbaye, one who fights for glory. His goals are to upset the champion and return to his homeland in a bid to become president. And in our main event, Heavyweight heat sparks hot tempers, injuries, and accusations plague the fighters and the headlines. For a while, it was anyone's bet who would step into the ring. The ankle injury will be confirmed by okay. all the experts. Okay. Right. The fight is on, unless this man chickens out. Ray Mercer pulled out of the J.B. Williamson yeah. fight, saying that he had an injury. Like you're pulling out of this fight. Like then his coward, then his coward manager. Get out of the way. Then Riddick Bowe and Bruce Seldon stepped forward and made it a fight. Selden boasts a record of 18 wins, 15 by knockout, but he's coming off a temporary setback he suffered last April. For the Atlantic City Express, this is a golden opportunity, his ticket to recognition. But he has one major stop along the way, and his name is Riddick Big Daddy Bo. The 1988 silver medalist holds an untarnished 25-0 record with 22 knockouts. Bo is one of the top prospects in a pool of young heavyweights, clamoring for a shot at the undisputed title. Tonight, he has come to Atlantic City to prove that he is the big daddy of them all. All right, hey, man, and come out of the fire. This may be the most brutal even round you've ever seen in boxing. A big rally by Alex. We are live from the Atlantic City Convention Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Tonight, TVKO proudly presents our August Fight of the Month, a powerful boxing doubleheader. First up, WBA Cruiserweight Champion Bobby Chaz defends his ground against Nigeria's Boss Ali. And then it's heavyweight action as top contender Riddick Big Daddy Bo sets out to prove that he's in line for a title shot in a showdown against hometown hero Bruce Atlantic City Express Selden. Tonight's boxing doubleheader is brought to you by Budweiser. The unto New Jersey boxers try to add wins to their records in front of many of their most vocal supporters. They are ready as we are to bring you exciting championship boxing. Hello everyone, I'm Cambrell Marshall. Welcome once again to TVKO's Fight of the Month. Riddick Bow, a young man we'll be talking to and seeing later on, is a heavyweight who very much believes in making his own path to the heavyweight championship of the world. It is difficult to argue that point as the way he has mowed his way through many of the opposition. His opponent tonight, Bruce Selden, cannot be taken lightly. The Atlantic City Express has taken the express route through much of his opposition. 15 knockouts in 18 fights. His only loss this past April Quite frankly, he simply just ran out of gas in the ninth round against Oliver McCall. He says that will not happen tonight. He will pull the upset. That is our main event, but our first bout this evening is the title fight for the WBA Cruiserweight Championship of the World. The challenger, Bosh Ali, a Nigerian. He's mixing boxing and politics. He hopes to one day be the president of his country. As a boxer, he has several regional and national championships, all as a cruiserweight. He is a natural cruiserweight. The champion, Bobby Chaz, is best known for his work as a middleweight and then later on as a light heavyweight. It was not long ago that he stepped into the cruiserweight ranks. Five months ago, in fact, when he fought and beat then WBA champion Robert Daniels. Tonight, another chapter in the tumultuous career of Bobby Chaz. Bobby Chaz never planned to box. His father jammed the sport down his throat. The straight-A student gave up medical scholarships to pursue his obsessive dad's dream. My father told me when I was 10 years old that I would have to box. We would be going to the gym. We would be going four or five days a week. We had no choice. 
Chaz was unstoppable as an amateur. Turning pro, he became a phenomenon. Still a teenager, his first 20 fights, all convincing wins, were on national TV. The promising middleweight matinee idol was set to rocket to superstardom with his battle with Mustafa Hamsho. Winning this crossroad fight would catapult the brawler to a multi-million dollar payday against Marvin Hagler. The growing boy wonder needed to starve himself, struggling to make weight for the crucial moment of truth. I came into the fight, I was so weak, I could hardly stand up. It was just too much for me, it was too experienced, too strong. The ham show thrashing sent the Wanakin, New Jersey native into one of boxing's most spectacular tailspins. His abusive father's suicide, the network TV plug pulled, a smashed hand, the final blowout with his promoters. All this hell thrown at a kid barely 20 years old. The glitter, the hopes, all gone. That period of right after the Hampshire lost is something I left behind me and will never, ever go back to. And uh, it, was, it was probably the most difficult time of my life. Avoiding oblivion, the gutty contender stormed back into the limelight as a light heavyweight. Chez ultimately grabbed the IBF title, regained his credibility, and set up a second crossroad fight. Beating Prince Charles Williams would earn him a guaranteed shot at champ Tommy Hearns and that elusive superstardom. A 24-year-old ruled the ring, dropping the challenger to the mat in round two and again in round three, but he couldn't put the fight away. Williams survived the attack, slammed his eye shut, and ended Chez's reign. In the rematch, Williams squashed Chez's eye again and his career as well. His will snapped, retirement was immediate. What did you say? You say that's it? Okay. It was a sign to just quote quits. And uh, so that's exactly what I did. Glory slipped away, obscurity returned. The stunning odyssey continued last spring with an then 28-year-old announced an incredibly questionable comeback. Physically, I'm every bit of 100%, if not a little more than when I was young. I feel better, both my mind and my body, so it's, uh, it's showing. Peace of mind is key. The darkest problems are gone. The self-managed competitor credits one person for the big turnaround. It's made, helped make me the most well-rounded my fiance Kim, I don't have a bad day anymore. Along with emotional stability, new diet and training methods concentrate on improving energy and endurance. He is the creator of an elaborate nutritional poison killing potion. My drink would consist of a blend of things which are basically concentrated herbs, roots, the combination of all of those things have given me extra energy, quicker recuperative powers, and I just feel better. For endurance, corrective back surgery allows extensive road work for the first time in more than a decade. His lifetime trainer believes the enhanced staying power is critical, keeping the brawler turned boxer's comeback perfect. Rather than trying to end the fight very quickly, uh, if he can do that, fine, but if he can't, now he has the ability to moderate uh, his outgo. The recharged Bobby Chads silenced the critics, comfortably going the distance in the WBA cruiserweight title clash against Robert Daniels. The 188-pounder captured his second championship and control of his life. I wasn't getting tired. I did a lot of boxing, a lot of smart things, a lot of mature things, a lot of thinking things. Tonight's threat to the revitalized champ comes from far away Nigeria. The battle with the more experienced Basharu Ali may lead to a high-profile, big-buck confrontation with Tommy Hearns. Ali is pumped for his 13th title bout for different reasons. Back home, he's known as Aja Gumbayi, one who fights for glory. The confident African is depending on ring success to bankroll a run for Nigeria's presidential palace. A win will give his campaign coffers a big boost. If he makes mistakes, I intend to make him pay. The only prediction I'll tell you is that I'm going to come out on top. I expect to keep this title for a while. Somewhere by the time I'm 32, I will gracefully bow out. And you'll know I'm serious when I get my nose fixed. When I get that straightened out, we're done. And it's bout time with an international flavor. Bobby Chaz defending his WBA title against Bash Ali. To call the action, let's go now to ringside and my colleague, WNBC New York sportscaster, Lynn Berman. Lynn? Thank you, Cambrell Marshall. And the last time we all gathered here in Atlantic City was for Holyfield and Foreman. And the heavyweight division has been in a state of turmoil ever since. Perhaps later on tonight with Riddick Bowe, we'll start to sort things out just a little bit. And I'm joined, as always, by the Los Angeles-based trainer, Joe Goosen. And Joe, how close do you suppose Riddick Bowe now is to the likes of Holyfield and Tyson? Well, Riddick Bowe is definitely the, he's the best prospect or anything out of the young bunch of heavyweights. Uh, but as his fight with Tony Tubbs a few months uh, ago proved, 
the ex-champion, heavyweight champ, Tony Tubbs, he lacked a certain uh, experience factor there. And I think a few more fights, maybe a year down the road, and he'll be up there with uh, Holyfield and Tyson. Not there yet. Not just yet. No. All right. He's got a little bit more experience to, to gain. First hour WBA Cruiserweight Championship fight tonight, and with Bobby Chez, all these years during that tumultuous career that Cambrell Marshall articulated earlier, he's always had that one goal which he's talked about, he continues to talk about. He's still pointing towards that big money payday with Thomas exactly. Hearns. Is, is he finally on the verge of getting that now? Well, if, if Tommy Hearns is going to uh, fight Bobby Chez, he's almost assured of making good money. And since uh, Hearns has won five world titles, he wants to go after an unprecedented sixth world title at 190 pounds, which isn't far from what his weight is right now. I think that would be a mega, mega fight uh, a mega dollar fight for both of them. Well, first, Chez has to get by Bosch Ali. Interesting story. He's been a professional fighting for 13 years, and he's yet to win a world title. Right. And he told us earlier today that he very confidently plans on controlling this fight from the beginning. I'm going to pause again on that one, Len. <laughs> I, I really don't know how, how much Bosch Ali believes that, but not too many people are able to really control Bobby Chez. He's uh, out of his five fights, he's lost four, been to world champions. So, um, you know, the rest, of the, uh, the rest of the crop that he's fought, he's handled pretty easily. It's going to be a tall order for uh, Bash Ali to control Bobby Chez. All right, let's start, as always, with our Goosen's Corner feature. Joe takes an inside look at the boxers. And let's start with the challenger, Bash Ali. Right. Well, Bash Ali, 33-year-old Bash Ali, and that's a big, that's a big uh, number right there for Ali because he's a little bit older. But what he's got to do is start fast against Bobby Chez. He's really got to go out there and try to catch Bobby Cole because Bobby isn't the quickest starter. Plus, he walks around at 210 pounds, 215 pounds, all he does. He trains down to 95. He's been a cruiserweight all his life. He's got to use that strength and muscle to maybe try to maul Chez and uh, wear him out a little bit and keep his punches coming. Normally, and I've seen him in past fights, he's been a punching machine. Sometimes he goes into a lull, but if he keeps the punches going, uses all the rest of the uh, strength that he has and is, uh, gets a start, uh, fast start, he might be able to upset Bobby Chez. And as you take a look at the Atlantic City Convention Center, we're in the ballroom portion of the arena. One thing to keep in mind about Bosch Ali is he has fought only four rounds in the past 17 months. And there, you take a look at the Nigerian as he makes his way towards the ring. Number seventh ranked cruiserweight in the WBA, looking for his first world title. He is a national hero in Nigeria. He says he is running for president. This isn't a joke. He plans to run in 1997. And he told us earlier today, we asked him, well, how popular are you in Nigeria? And he said his name is second at home only to God Almighty. And he was dead serious about that. Yeah, he was. I didn't laugh when he said it, but he was, he was definitely serious. Been around a long time. Uh, people might not know he was a political science major at Berkeley. Bright man. And popular boxer those who have seen him fight he's had one major title fight and he lost that one in 1984 to Carlos de Leon for the WBC Cruiserweight Championship and Bosch Ali the first to enter the ring tonight in Atlantic City his ring record 34 and 12 losses and 16 knockouts his fights do tend to go a few rounds Although his word tonight is that he should be able to stop Bobby Chez in the middle rounds. That's what he told us. And let's take a look at your Goosen's Corner, Joe, for the champion, yeah. Bobby Chez. I'm ready to tell you all about it. Bobby really, uh, in his last outing, was, uh, fought the champion, Robert Daniels, brilliantly. What he did was, uh, and I feel he should do it in this fight also, get in and out like he did against uh, Robert Daniels. Ali's an awkward fighter, uses head, elbows, he's all over the place. Get in and out, box him well. Uh, also, Ali's 33 years old. He's got to hit that body on Ali. Try to slow him down. If he's in real good shape, he could be uh, the type of guy that keeps on coming. And you want to slow that motion down by hitting the body. Then lastly, if uh, Ali goes the distance like he normally does, Bobby's got to pay, uh, pace himself and uh, not expend all of his energy in the earlier mid-rounds. But pace himself and save some for this 12-round uh, fight. And here comes the WBA Cruiserweight Champion. He beat Robert Daniels back in March. It'll be easy to tell whom the crowd will be rooting for tonight. Chez, of course, a New Jersey native. That was his championship fight when he won it and surprised a lot of people. He said he feels he's reborn now in the twilight of his career. He said he feels better now than when he was 24. He credits his diet and training and his fiance Kim 
In fact, he was supposed to marry her tomorrow. That's been postponed by this little exercise here tonight. He said the wedding date is now three weeks after his next fight. And Bobby Chez, the champion, enters the ring. Thirty-eight and five. And you can see he has more knockout potential than Bash Ali does. Twenty-six knockouts in his thirty-eight victories. And we'll take a look at the tail of the tape. Chez says he's happy for a change. He's the younger fighter by four years. Similar height and weight. And Bash Ali with a bit of the reach advantage. And our WBA New Jersey rules, 10-point must system, no standing eight count. Three knockdown rule is in effect. Cannot be saved by the bell in any of the 12 championship rounds, and either the doctor or the referee can stop the fight. And right now, let's go up to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, top rank incorporated and the undisputed, undefeated king of beer, Budweiser, present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is approved by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board Members Gary Shaw and Richard Harrison, Deputy Commissioners at ringside Lawrence Wallace and R. Yogi Hiltner, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Frank B. Doggett, Attending Physicians Charles Wilson and Eric Wormser. The three judges assigned to this bout doing the scoring on a 10-point must system are John Potteray, Phil Newman, and Vinny Renoni. The timekeeper is Lindsay Tucker, counting for the knockdown seconds alternate referee Joe O'Neill. And the man in charge of this bout in the ring at this time is the referee Steve Smoger. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Atlantic City's Convention Hall, uh, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with red trim, weighing an even 188 pounds. He's originally from Nigeria, but now lives and fights out of Andover, Massachusetts. As a professional, his record 34 and 12, 16 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the challenger, Bash, Mr. President Ali. <laughs> and fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks and also weighing in at an even 188 pounds. He's fighting out of Montgomery Township, New Jersey, and this two-time world champion brings a professional record of 38 and 5 with 26 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the WBA Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Bobby Chappie Chess! All right, gentlemen, you are given your instructions in the dressing room. My commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Bash, a shot here is going to be considered a legal shot because that's the height of the trunk, okay? Any questions, gentlemen? Touch him up. Let's touch him. Chez likes to say that the first round is his. He's free to do whatever he wants out there, Joe. And then he says after that, he's under the strict instructions of Tommy Parks. Right. Well, he says he has his own system of testing a man out. Bash Ali, he says this is Nigeria against the United States. And you saw he has three New Jersey judges to contend with as well tonight. And Bash Ali goes right in there. Chez works low. I have to wonder about the ring-in activity of Ali over the last 17 months. Yeah, he's, uh, he's really only been fighting an average of once or twice a year to uh, take the trip over the past five or six years. He hasn't been real active. He says the reason for some of that is a management change as Chez catches him with a left hand. catches him with the right. In the opening minute, uh, Ali looks a bit tentative to me. Well, for someone who said he was going to start quickly, he's definitely not doing that. And, and that may be, be because of the inactivity over the past uh, year, year and a half. Chez continues to be the aggressor.
Sanchez is, what he's doing now, he's working behind a jab as he moves in, which is better than jumping in with that left hook or the right hand, which he was before. He's got a great short jab, and he even beats tall guys with it, and that's what he's got to do. Put that jab to use right here. Things like that. Former IBF light heavyweight champion. And now the WBA cruiserweight champion. Oh, he hurt Ali again. with that good hook there. Either he just fell back awkwardly, or that, that made him stumble a little bit. Might have stepped on his foot, Jeff. Good jab from Chez. Again, Ali looks a little bit awkward to me, but that, he is an awkward fighter. But Chez getting the better of him here as we near the 32nd mark of the first round. Chez tried a hook, and uh, again, forced backwards, Ali was. Chez has him in the corner. That was really target practice for Bobby Chez right now against Ali. And Ali just landed a good solid jab right there. But Bobby, uh, he's got to pace himself, because you can tell that Ali takes a great shot. Good first round for Bobby Chez. Relax no more. Relax, you're not going to be in any hurry. Okay? Relax no more, no hurry. Put your hands up. Inside. Inside, if you don't want to fight in the time, you get enough to put your tape. Okay? Good. Otherwise, you're doing good. Take the jab, easy Just don't pull up when you step back. No water. Right. Give me some water. Don't pull up. Give me a step up, John. Good. 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 Back. He's throwing long overhand hook. Drop in. Drop in. Spit back. Spit back. Drop in. You understand? Okay. When, okay, is, let's go. when is that? Let's go. Drop in. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Yeah. You heard Tommy Parks tell Bobby Chez, no hurry, you're doing fine. One of the problems during the course of Chez's career, he calls himself one of the best five round fighters ever. He just didn't know how to pace himself, but he right. feels he could take anyone and has been able to do anything to anyone for five rounds and, and he has to learn to pace himself right and Tommy Park's concerned with that that he may be a little over anxious to try to knock him out too soon you have to feel that Bobby Chez feels confident after that first round oh, yeah. he definitely had his way with uh, Ali and they just banged heads on the inside there they better be careful yeah, because Bobby's known to cut it. and for that eye to puff up a lot both of them a little right hand sneaked in from Bosh Ali. Right, well he did what Tommy Parks told him not to do, and that was to step back with his head up, and uh, Ali caught him with that right uppercut. Chez lands the left and then the right. Ali comes back with the jab. Boy. Chez after him again. Boy, this is target practice, really. He's teeing off on him, hitting him with solid shots, and Ali keeps on coming. Jab from Ali, about the only thing that's been connected from him. Chez, a couple of good jabs. Another one. Good body shot from Bobby Chez, and went to the right uppercut. Well, he's working him over from head to toe. Ali's just got to get something going offensively. He's waiting too long, I and mean, he's got to get his hands going and hope he'll catch Chez with All something. he's doing is the jab, Joe. That's yeah. it. Jab here, jab there, and that's it. Not coming in with anything. There it is, another one from Ali. That's it, just the jam. Heads came a little bit close there again. Mm -hmm. oh, blood coming from the nose of Ali. He's taking a lot of good shots right off that beak. Final minute of the second round. Those two rounds have been good ones for Bobby Chez. Well, this is something we talked about before the fight. Ali has two different personalities. One where he's a punchy machine, and oh, great right hand to the body. And one where he just stagnates. But was that was a right hand there. from Ali. It was the best right hand he's shown. The 
business about Ali controlling this fight. Not yet. Oh, Bobby Chez comes in. Strong combination. Well, if Ali continues to take this kind of uh, punishment and stand up to it, Chez has got to be concerned with pacing himself in the later rounds. Scheduled for 12. Championship fight. Final seconds of the second round. My instinct, drop your head under his glove. I mean, you've got to actually put that set up here by see what you're doing by habit, you're pulling out. And I know it's difficult. By instinct, drop under his glove and punch as you drop it under his glove. Okay? Like you jab, you hit him anytime you want with the jab, you know that, don't you? Follow a good power shot with the jab. A right hand, step okay. in with two jabs and a right cross right behind him. Okay. Do not pull your head up, he's throwing overhand punches. Step in. Lay him up there, right hand to that body. Come back to that hook underneath there. Body. Don't pull up. Okay? Everything's perfect. Everything's perfect. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a runaway for, uh, for Chez here, percentage, uh, connect percentage. He's just dominating uh, Ali. Ali was told in his corner to duck under the punches, and when he does, drop down and hit the body. And plus, double jab and a straight right. right hand but to keep his head down don't throw it with the head up that was the point we made and that's what bill harkins said to him the jab was landing but he had to follow it up carmine graziano also told uh, ali that uh, to work that jab you can hit him any time with it but on the other hand chez did exactly what tommy uh, parks asked him to do right hand to the body Showing some patience here. Ali connected with a soft uppercut. Here comes Chez with the right to the body. And he backs up Ali. Uh, this is what could spell the end to Ali if Chez really works that body well. The right hand to the head. Chez with a chance to put him away midway through the third round. You know, this would be a big feather in Chez's cap if he knocked out Ali, because he's only been stopped twice, once by Henry Tillman and once by Henry Hearns, both of them heavyweights, and when they were both in their prime. So he's not the type of guy that gets knocked out at easily at all, and he's had 40-something fights. Now Chez allows Ali in the middle of the ring with a minute to go in the third. So Bosch Ali weathered that storm and comes back with a couple of rights of his own. Chez. Oh, Ali with a good right hand. It didn't come very fast, but it sure landed well. And the hook from Chez. That was Ali's best right hand of the match. <laughs> Chez followed the body shot with the left. The final 30 seconds of the third round. Another right to the body, a strong one from Chez. Chez connects again. Ali's starting to come closer and closer with his counter punches. He's trying to work off of, uh, off of Chez's punches and react to them with his own, and he's coming very close now to landing some decent shots. Ali, who has staggered a bit, survives the third round. Well, we have our guest judge with us tonight is John Saracino, the fine boxing writer of USA Today. John, how'd you score the first three? Well, I've got a shutout going for Bobby Chez, Len, 30 to 27. Bobby's just out hustling Bash Ali, whose reflexes seem to be shot, and his legs don't seem real strong. Okay. Want me to walk him? 
you know, you do what you're doing. You're doing fine. Just don't pull up. You're doing just fine. And a peak of the third round. Here's uh, Chez landing that left hook. That's just a setup for that right hand of the body. Take your eyes off of that right hand. There he goes, throwing a few straight punches right down the middle. But the most effective one was that right hand of the body, right under the heart. Uh, Tommy Parks wants uh, Chez to start working that left hand of the body now on that side where the uh, liver is under the right rib cage. That's a, a, even a more effective body punch. The fourth round scheduled for 12. Well, CompuBox has Chez landing 74% of, of all the power shots he's mm. thrown, which seems reasonable because he really hasn't missed Bash Ali with anything. And the right hand from Chez. Ali has really absorbed some punches here this evening. Chez has him up against the ropes. Now Lee comes off of there. They exchange. Chez hits one and then Ali responds. Chez's his jab doing the damage. You wonder what Ali does have left. Chez hits him again. Ali not coming back with much of anything here in the fourth round. Chez backs him up to the ropes again, tries the uppercut. Ali's right response is a soft one, midway through the fourth round. Ali hanging on here. Well, his people told, told us today that he trained in, uh, for five weeks in his home country, and they said he was in tremendous shape. Yeah. And that's probably why he is taking this sort of punishment and being able to stand up to it. He caught another right, and there he catches a left. not doing much of anything and Chez on the attack again I guess I think Chez has to be careful about is punching himself out right. because as you articulated earlier target practice there's only so many rounds you can hit a heavy bag before you get tired and a heavy bag doesn't even punch back so when you're when you're punching on a big man that has the ability to punch back mm. well, over 12 rounds that can be tiring another good jab or two from Bobby Chez now Lee misses Chez a bit wild with his punch there and he shouldn't because those are energy draining in themselves. Sure. He's missing a punch. What he's got to do is just be, keep pinpointing his punches, be accurate. Don't get carried away and pace himself. Boy, did you see Ali flinch there before the punch ever came? Final 30 seconds of a fourth round in a fight that's been dominated by the champion, Bobby Chez. I'm starting to flinch over here, Len. I'm telling you, this is as one-sided as a fight gets. Final seconds of round number four. Oh! <laughs> That's it for the fourth. That was a strong left, left hook, right hand, but Chez fired right back. He didn't want Ali to think that that had any effect on him. Just wait, wait when he's in reach, Bash. Take all your time, put the jab. Stop his forward motion with your left jab, okay? Then drop, don't pull out. You pulled out a couple of that time, then he nailed it. Drop, and when you drop, come up with wicked uppercuts right off the chest. Either hand, okay? Drop, and come up with uppercuts right off the chest. Stay inside, don't pull out. That'll stop you from pulling out, too. You stay in. Drop right up, target your head right under his gloves. Okay. Okay? Anytime he's in reach, knock him off balance with a jab. When you're not going to do that, target your head like a zoom right under his gloves and wicked uppercut with either hand. Bring him right off the chest. They'll slide off the chest and they want to chin him. Good round. You're getting stronger and he's using more power. That's right. He's looking for you to pull. Can't fight him backing up. All right, here's Chez working that jab, but took his own in return. Took one from Ali in return. Working around uh, uh, Ali, which is the thing to do. Not staying in front of him with that. But there goes Ali with a counter left uppercut, and that's exactly what Carmine Graziano wants him to do. Use the jab, stop Chez's forward motion, and use the uppercuts. Well, I heard Graziano say you're getting stronger, Bosch. Uh, do you believe it? Well, by virtue of that good left hook right hand mm -hmm. he threw at the end of the round, and that lead right hand there, he's doing more than he did in the first and second round. That's encouraging. Mm -hmm. This is the fifth round. Bobby Chez and Bosch Ali for the WBA Cruiserweight Championship. It's 
obvious Chez doesn't want to be up against the ropes. The Chez jab continues to find the target. Another one. And another one staggers him. Followed by the right from Chez. And another right from Bobby Chez. And another one. Chez has Ali in the corner once again. But he's, he, he's going after him like he did Prince Charles Williams. He looks like he wants to knock him out. He's got him hurt. But it's amazing the recuperative powers of, of uh, Ali here. Williams was able to beat Chez twice. Chez again on the offensive. Quick on your step, step, step. Steve Smoger, the referee, working his 25th championship fight. Midway through the fifth round. You're loose, you're loose. Uh, Chez has to be wondering here. Well, that was a smart move by Chez to get off those ropes. Because Ali's moving that head around in there. He's awkward. Get off the ropes. Don't get caught with something stupid. But here he is back on the ropes again. Good right hand from Chez. Another strong right from Chez. You saw that one from the angle. Perfect. Here's where Bobby should be throwing some body shots in here. Final minute of a strong fifth round for Bobby Chez. As in the third, where he seemed to have Ali in trouble for a while. See, if, if, Sam, if Ali can do the same type of thing he just did there, keep Chez pinned on the ropes and maul him a little bit, that might even tire him out even a little bit more, along with Bobby wasting a lot of punches like that one. Chez did a 360. Well, we mentioned earlier he said he can fight anyone for five rounds, and Chez has certainly had a dominating five rounds. It'll be interesting to see what happens Don't after punch, this punch. one. As an example, Chez has never knocked anybody out after the seventh round, which goes with the theory. You know, to me, Chez was being most effective when he was hitting the body shot. It seemed like that really took the biggest toll. Huh? Right, he certainly has. He's gotten away from it. And they just bang heads on the inside there. No cuts yet. Two clean boxers thus far through five rounds. You ain't got anxious. Don't get anxious. Try not to. You ain't got to do anything but beat this guy, which you're doing every round. Here we go. Earlier in the round here with Chez on the attack. Drops the right hand after that jab. Pushes Ollie back and tries to go to the body, but it's a little wide. And here's, uh, here's both of them just clutching each other on the inside. Here's later in the round. Chez comes up with his head. Heads came together there. Right, quickly. exactly. And there's Ali working a double uppercut mm. to the body and head, left hook. But here he is rubbing that head on the eyebrows, banging around inside there. That's where Bobby could get banged up a little bit, and uh, that might turn the tag in this fight. He wants to stay off those ropes. Torpedo your head right under his gloves and bring an uppercut right toward the ceiling, okay? No, Throw your head right under his gloves. Okay. Throw your head right under his gloves and uppercut. Those numbers were pretty startling. If you, if you just took the connect percentage, it's a blowout right now. And I think the scores would uh, reflect that. Most probably a shutout for Bobby Chez at this point as we start the sixth round. And to Ali's credit, he's been a wily veteran so, so far. A lesser man would have been gone a long time ago. Definitely. Chez again connects, and you see the look on Ali's face as he wobbles off. Well, the big plus in Ali's favor is that he's a natural big man. Chez has just come up in this past year to this weight division after being a middleweight and lightweight for the past 10 years. Chez living off that jab. That's a good point he made in the last round about the lack of body shots from Chez, although he tried one there. Right. He was probably told by Tommy Parks to go back to it a little bit in, uh, in the corner in between rounds. Ali finding the jab range a little bit here. Chez catches him with a left, tries to corner him again. Steve Smoker separates the boxers. Ali trying to hold on and then come on with an uppercut. Really trying to pull out all the tricks he can here. Chez has him against the ropes in the sixth round. And went to that rib cage real well with two left hooks. Oh, 
two beautiful shots to the body. He had to, have been, he had to have been told by Parks because he's, he's working overtime to the body this round where he didn't do anything last round. Coming to the one minute mark of the sixth round. A little bit less action in this round than some of the others, although there's Chez. First the jab and then the right. And a left to the body and another right from Chez. Chez starting to get a little red around the eyes on either side of both eyes, and that's from the maneuvering of heads along the ropes there. And Chez now, for a rare time, content to stay up against the ropes. And he turns him around. The final 30 seconds of the sixth. Now they're both doing a bit of clutching. Chez in the final seconds of the sixth round. As Chez playing a bit of possum towards the end of the fifth round. And after six rounds, midway through the 12 round championship fight, John Saracino, our guest judge from USA Today. Pretty consistent, huh, John? Len, Bobby Chez outboxing and outpunching Bash Ali, totally dictating the pace and flow of the fight. and. Unless Bash can come up with something big here, it doesn't look good for him. Do you get the feeling Chez can put him away, John? That's been the surprising thing. He's hit Bash with a lot of power shots, and unless Bash poured concrete in his jaw before the fight, I don't know what's holding the guy up. Well, it is his track record. He, he, he doesn't get knocked out very often. He's only been stopped twice. Right. That's by, by two heavyweights. Uh, you know, I think Ali's really going to let it hang out. He's got to just throw caution to the wind, I think, and try to turn the tide here with a big shot. He's got to let his hands go more. So we start the seventh round. Unofficially, Bobby Chez pitching a shutout. Well, that was a good start for Ali. He got off the first shot there, a good left hook, but he's waiting around again, and that's 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 been his downfall all night, waiting. He's got to initiate something Ooh, like that. That was a good right hand from Ali. Covers up the retort from Chez, and then Chez connects with another jab. Ali misses wildly. He grazed a pretty sneaky right hand off of uh, Chez's uh, left side of his chin, too, there. Oh, Ooh, Chez, first the jab, and then a good right hook, and another left. Chez doing it to Ali once again here in the seventh. would make the uh, I think the toughest president in the whole wide yes. world. <laughs> Chez connects again. Ali had said he thought he could stop Chez in the middle rounds. Doesn't look like it will happen here. Chez continues to connect. Good, not a class. Something happened there where they banged yes. heads or a low blow. They, touched gloves. they yeah. touched gloves as a sign of you know respect, professional respect. That was nice to see. That's what Ali was saying. He viewed this as just a business proposition. He was a little bit disappointed that Chez really didn't stop and talk with him much. Well, he was talking about before the fight at mm -hmm. the weigh-in, Chez kind of walked by him and ignored him. But uh, listen, that's what you got to expect from a man that you're, you're about to go into a fight with. But you notice after the fights, they usually always shake hands, give each other a big hug, and that's what counts. Now you wonder, is Chez a bit tired, or would Chez be weary of not being able to put him away as we're in the final minute of the seventh round? Oh. Chez with a strong right there. Didn't look weary on that punch, no. and Ali wobbled again. The crowd trying to urge Chez to finish it off. Ali against the ropes, hanging on with both gloves. Chez looking for the knockout punch with 30 seconds remaining in the seven. That was one of Chez's best punches of the night. 
The looping overhand right caught him right on the temple, sent uh, Ali back to the ropes. Well, he hasn't stopped trying, though. He's still landing some cute little uppercuts on the inside. That'll do it for the seventh round. Is missing in tight. <laughs> uh, you, but you're doing fine. Listen you're to me. Fine. All you gotta do is you're doing. He hasn't got a round in here. Drop a little water on you. Here's early in the last round here with Chez using the jab. He slips the counter jab and lands a jab right hand of his own on Ali. Kind of wobbles him a little bit. He falls back awkwardly. They both trade jabs. Here's later in the round. Chez pressing the action. Ali falling on the ropes and. Bing fell short with that left uh, right hand left uppercut, but I think he lands something maybe right directly after. Here's another angle of it. Right uppercut from Ali, jab, right hand falling short from Chess and the left uppercut missing. So nothing really connecting on that replay, but a right hand did somewhere along the line land over the top. Oh, absolutely. Ali. To start the eighth round, remember Chess never in his career has had a knockout this late in the fight. Something to bear in mind as he tries to put away a game Bosch Ali. And on the other hand, Ali, the two times he was stopped, it was in the first round and second round. So uh, he doesn't get stopped after the second round. We've had no knockdowns tonight. Chez has been in control of the fight. A couple of times he has wobbled Ali, but that's been the extent of it. He's landed the jab as he did there repeatedly. Neither fighter cut. Oh, good right hand from Chez. Well, whatever Chez has been doing in training has really been paying off. Is he's still throwing a hard, sharp punch here in the eighth round? Well, he talked at length this morning about his diet and his training, and that he's geared for the long haul. He actually looks like he has a second win now. He's kind of got a better rhythm to himself here. He might even pick up the pace a little bit in this round. Tried to double off the jab. See, Bobby's right got to be Chez. Yeah, Chez has got to be careful. He threw that lazy jab, brought it back slowly, and Ali tried to counter it over the top. Uh, no, he's got to be careful. He can't get uh, complacent just because he's really handling Ali this easily. Lee has seemingly done very little damage throughout the nearly eight rounds we've had. He's landed a couple of rights, some good jabs, and that's been the extent of it. Chez's punches still appear crisp, and there's a right hand. Side of 30 seconds to go in the eighth. I'm surprised Ali still wants to throw punches back, you know. I mean, because he's taking a brutal beating here. And it's amazing that he still has the presence of mind to throw some accurate shots, an uppercut here, a body shot there. Doesn't seem to be much starch left in the right hand at all, though. Chez connects again as the final seconds wear down in the eighth. You gotta keep going, Bash. He's weakening. He's weakening. You gotta go strong. You gotta go strong. What on my head? Okay, okay. Bash, this is round nine. Come on, Eddie, okay? This is round nine, Bash. You cannot win by decision. You okay. must start trying for not. You gotta go. You gotta know the okay. side facts here. Okay. That's all. You cannot win by decision any longer. You must try for the Four rounds, and he's weakening, Bash. You can see it. 
and you're getting careful. You're starting to put your head up. You're concentrating on putting your head under his gloves and his phone. Come on. You think not that from here in back. Jab. Close take, close take, and boom. Boom over the body. Boom over there, right? Take him up. Well, you heard Carmen Graziano state the obvious. Bosch, you cannot win by decision. He said it twice. You have to start going to a knockout. Let's see how Ali responds to those instructions. He was at that point a couple rounds ago. Is why he should have just gone for the knockout. He's taken more abuse in the past six, nine minutes, and uh, it may be harder for him to accomplish that feat now. His corner blowing a little bit of smoke, though, saying that Chez is getting weaker. I mean, I don't buy that one. Uh, you couldn't you couldn't approve that by the last round because Chez landed some dynamite job. straight right. He really did. Good guy. Good. He kind of neglected the body last round though. Well now in the ninth round. It was a nice right from Ali in there. Chez responded. Ali doing a little bit of flinching again. I guess I would too at this point. <laughs> See Ali just backing off and angling away from what he knows is coming. Chez tried the body punch there. Minute gone in the ninth round. Well, Ali should keep that left hand stationary next to that left side of his face because that's what he's been eating all night. Right hands. He should try to at least come back with his own counter right hand or something from uh, off of Chez's right hand. It has been a fairly quiet crowd here at the convention hall. Perhaps they're saving it for Riddick Bowe and Bruce Seldon, the heavyweights, which will follow. I think most likely that this is really not a very competitive fight. Uh, this is a one-sided fight, and it's hard to get excited about one guy taking a lot of abuse from another fighter. Midway through the ninth round, and Chez continues to throw many punches, and Ali tries. But you heard what the corner told him about having to go for the knockout. This is how he does it. Uh, I fear it's not going to happen for him. No. Inside of a minute to go now in the ninth round. A fight that's been dominated by the WBA Cruiserweight champ Bobby Chez in his first defense. Well, you know, Bobby's looked impressive. It's not hard to look impressive against Ali tonight, but, but Bobby has looked impressive, and that's important to him because if he wants to hook up with that fight with uh, Tommy Hearns, this is a type of uh, performance he needed. A strong one, a lot of punching, a lot of power punching, and uh, being effective. Not unlike the performance that night March we saw, which won him the title against Robert Daniels. And that was, that was against a lot more competitive fighter, too. Uh -huh. But it went the distance. Now Lee just has very little left, if anything. He's got a cut in that left eyelid, it looks like uh, Ali does. And I'm surprised uh, that's the first one with as many punches he's hit on that, yeah, I agree with on you. that left side. And there's the undefeated young heavyweight, Riddick Bowe. As he gets ready to face Bruce Seldon, as always, <laughs> knows where the camera is and enjoys it. Nine rounds are complete of this WBA cruiserweight fight, fight and it's it. all been Bobby Chiz. What I'm saying is so easy inside, outside. You want to play it outside. I don't want to get any cuts in your booze. You can do it, Bash. You uh, can do it. A little cut there, Eddie? Yeah, move it. Okay. Your left jab. So I ask you to do what you're doing. Okay. I'm asking you not to do it. I'll take that. Step in, extend that jab. I don't know. Ali's corner telling him he can do it. Ali's corner telling him he can do it, and Chess's corner telling him they're not really concerned about a knockout. They're saying, box, don't get bruised, don't get cut. Just finish the fight unscathed, and uh, let's get on to the next one. That's really what Chess has to guard against from here on out. He's just right. not doing anything stupid. Don't play with it. Go ahead. 
I think that Ali's vision is imp impaired out of that left eye, the way he's uh, angling himself. His close just a little bit, catches the hand, Chez again. Another jab. Step clean. Good, fellas. The third round, and again in the fifth, Chez had Ali in deep trouble and just could not put him away. Ali and missing with the left and the right. And, and what the heck? Why shouldn't he just keep on doing that? Why does he just let the hands go, see if he can catch him with something, get him in exchange? But sitting here, he's just taking more of the same. He's not following his corner's instructions. may be the toughest future president of Nigeria, but also one that's absorbed the most damage. Right, I... I don't know if he's going to uh, have anything left to run. Another the good right hand from Bobby Chez. And Ali with that two-handed hold on once again. Mm. You know, it wouldn't be beyond uh, Ali's corner to tell to the truth to stop this fight, really, to save any further punishment because he's really not offering Chez anything back in return. Mm -hmm. He really isn't. Hasn't for several rounds now, Joe. 33 years old, he's got to figure this is basically his last hurrah. No sense in taking any more punishment. The home state crowd wants to see Chez put him away. Chez, despite what his corner thinks, wants to go after that knockout, you can tell. Smoger taking a close look at the eye of Bash Ali. Continues to absorb punches. Right hand sneaks in from Ali. And Ali tries to follow it up wildly. Final seconds of the tenth round. Come here, don't punch. Step out, step on. I'm getting tired of watching this, Len. This is getting <laughs> this is getting to wear on you. There's the hometown hero, Bruce Selden. Just one loss in his last fight. Well built. You see those arms and shoulders? You know he doesn't lift weights. All from push-ups. Yeah. Which he started when uh, he was behind bars. Mm -hmm. he was, uh, that's what he said. He said he was big, but never this big. But with the concentrated workouts and all the calisthenics he does, he says he just put on this type of uh, definition. He was incarcerated for armed robbery, and he started doing push-ups and sit-ups, and that's how he got strong. John Saraceno, our guest judge from USA Today, and I guess more of the same, John. Boy, if all fights were this easy to score, Len, a total paint <laughs> job by Bobby Chez on Bash Ali. And if you put a rope on Bash Ali, I think he'd do a good imitation of a punching bag. <laughs> but he is trying. He, he's been doing one without the rope, but he is trying. And that's, that's, that's the shame of it. You'd like to see him at least get more for his effort. Well, if anything, give him a half a point for still standing through 10 rounds as we start the 11th, scheduled for 12. Well, through 10 rounds, 76% of Chez's, and that's an astounding number have landed uh, compared to 25 of, uh, of Ali's. Looks like if he ever is elected uh, president, he could use a good minister of defense, so I'll tell you that. Like. <laughs> oh, another strong right from Bobby Chez. Continues to just try to hold on midway through the 11th. 
But the amazing thing, he's still coming forward. I mean, he's still willing to take this abuse, trying to land something, which is amazing. I mean, uh, but, you know, the, the, the man is really a, a, a brave individual and a, and a tough one to be able to do this. He's still coming after Chez after all the abuse he's taken. Final total of punches he takes from CompuBox would just be astounding if this thing does go the full 12 rounds, and that's the way we're headed. I'd say for a championship fight, I, I doubt if it's ever been this one size of a championship fight where the challenger has landed so few punches the and the champ so many. So much for uh, Ali uh, avenging the loss of his uh, countryman, uh, uh, Akeem Anafuashi, who lost to Robert Kioroga for the uh, Bantamweight Championship in Texas uh, a month or so ago. Anafuashi, of course, sustaining some head injuries in that one. Doing a lot better now. For Final 30 seconds of the 11th round. Oh, another looping right from Chez connects. Look at Ali, he just grimaced, looked down, squinted his eyes. And Ali took a long time to get over to his corner. Stroll back to his seat. Ambling back. 11 rounds are complete and a one-sided affair. Every 30. John, you got to watch who tell Charlie. Yeah. They won. Huh? Yeah. Two, two, six. Huh? Come on, you say. Just count them. Last one, we touch him in the center. Me. One, two, three, center. Oh, last 30. On the head. Yeah. On the head. Okay, you know, I don't know what you're saying. Good. Okay, good ball. Okay. Well, look at those numbers. Okay, just say 30. Last round, bash everything you got. Bash, this you is know it. what I would do three to get rid of the last one. That's what I would do. Oh, uh -huh. I'm going to tell you to do something that I generally don't tell guys to do, but this is that's way. Carry your hands a little lower, guys. Like the line here. Look back. Touch gloves to start the 12th and final round. Interesting instructions from Graziano there. And I don't think Bash is going to do it, even though I know what Carmine wants him to do. Put your hands down low, deke him in, and try to whip something over the top. Try to catch him with a with a uh, sucker punch, but. Uh, Carmine said it's something I don't normally right. tell a fighter to do because it is very dangerous. But I think uh, Ali's taken enough abuse with his hands up. Well, Ali has to let it all hang out. And still doesn't show the ability or the desire to do it here. The opening 45 seconds of the final round. Nothing on that right hand, as it's been for several rounds. <laughs> now certainly not an entertaining way to end an affair like this. A lopsided win for Bobby Chez. He had Ali staggered in a couple of the rounds and just couldn't finish him off. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Nobody except the heavyweights ever done that to Bash Ali. Chez caught him with another one. But it's good to know for Bobby Chez that 190 pounds, his punch is effective and will hurt a big man. I'm guessing unless someone scored a 10-8 in any of the rounds, we're looking at a 120 to 108 scorecard. At least that's where we have it unofficially here at ringside in the final minute of the 12th round. There have been no low blows or knockdowns or cuts or points deducted. It's been pretty much this way throughout the entire 12 rounds. 
You see the number after 11 rounds, over 400 punches landed from Bobby Chez. Nearly as many as Bash Ali threw. Ali did catch Chez with an uppercut there. But just not a lot of steam behind the punches right now. Bash Ali and Chez hanging on for the final seconds of this victory. applauding here yeah. the last few seconds for Ali surviving this fight. Some warm applause as the fight comes to an end. Fans pleased with what they saw. And of course Ali raising his hands, not as if to say I won, but hey, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Still standing as the song goes. Yeah, right. Bobby looks unscathed in the 12 rounds with Bash Ali. Bash's eyes looked a little bit more puffy. But I think the way Chez looks is as a result of the little Bash Ali was able to do. And John Saraceno is with us, the boxing writer of USA Today. And uh, John, did you... Uh, See it the same way all the way through, no change, huh? Total shutout, Len. Uh, it's amazing the amount of punishment that Bash Ali absorbed. But I was disappointed that Bobby Chez was not able to take Bash out of there on more than two occasions. Um, a couple times he allowed himself to be tied up along the ropes instead of backing off, maybe going to the body, and then going upstairs. Yeah, I think in the third and fifth rounds he had a chance. All right, let's go up to Michael Buffer and see if it is 120 to 108. Ladies and gentlemen, the scoring for this bout has been tabulated by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board and World Boxing Association Supervisor Ringside, Bolivar E. Casa. Here is the official scoring. John Pottere, Vinny Renoni, and Phil Newman all scored about the same. 120 to 108 for the winner by unanimous decision, retaining his WBA Cruiserweight Championship, Bobby Chappie. Well, I agree with you, John Cyrus. You know, I wish all fights were that easy to score. Uh, all the judges had it the same way as you and I. Bobby Chez just totally outclassed Bash Ali. Yeah, look at these numbers here. You throw 733 punches, land 435 of them. The connect percentage, 59% to 28%. So it really, it was really from beginning to end a shutout. Good point that Joe made earlier was that uh, Bobby Chez was punching first and Bash Ali was kind of waiting for the action instead of initiating the action. But of course, that's also a function of age and time. I mean, he's kind of have a, has a stale punch and old legs and that's what you get. He looked a bit tentative from the get-go, really. One thing I noticed when he walked into the ring, he seemed to be a little bit dry, which is not mm -hmm. usually a good sign. A guy should come in with a good sweat on and he didn't seem like he was ready right from the start. All right, let's send it up to Joe Goosen in the ring, who's with the champion. I tried to move, and I just couldn't get my feet under me. All right, here I am with Bobby Chess, still the uh, champion after his first defense for the uh, WBA Cruiserweight champion and Tommy Parks' his trainer. Bobby, I, I tell you the truth, towards the end, I started feeling sorry for this kid with the amount of shots you, you hit him with. I doubt if you did, but uh, tell me about it. What was going through your mind as you were hitting him with all these shots, and then the kid was still there? Well, I was standing outside. I was a little bit tired due to his awkward strength. And he was butting me and swinging over the top and the back of the neck. Tommy said, stay outside. No need to go inside. Move him. Stick him. Throw that big right hand over the top. Come up with the left hand. And uh, it, it took its toll. I walked him around, did what I wanted. Right. You know, it seemed like uh, every so often uh, you'd take a round off to the body and then you go back to it the next round. You'd take a round off. W was that purposely or were you just neglecting it? And, and Tommy, when he did go back to the body, was it you who was reminding him? Well, yeah, we had to remind him time to time because he was hitting hit so easily that the tenders want to stay up there. But then when we remind him, we went back to the body nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, Bobby, did you did you did you say that you did get a little fatigued, a little tired towards the end there? Just a little bit, but not a real lot. I was just trying to get out of the way of his head and tie him up. I knew I was way ahead on points. No sense in being silly. Uh, Mildred Taylor, as proud as a moment as it was to try and stop Chavez, 
course in history. Right, exactly. No, you did a, you did a beautiful performance tonight. You threw a lot of beautiful technical punches. Now, let me ask you something. The next fight you have uh, earmarked, what is it? I mean, are you, you eyeballing anybody? Is it Tommy Hearns? There's a lot of talk yeah, about that. fight Tommy Hearns. I think, I think that's, a, that's a natural fight, Bobby and Tommy. Oh, I agree. Tommy and I are warriors who come to fight. I think it's a super fight. If uh, we can reach terms, let's do it. Great. Love to see you back in action on TVKO. Thanks again, and back to Len Ringside. All right, thank you, Joe. So once again, Bobby Chez doing as he's done throughout this career, mentioning that he wants to fight Thomas Hearns. He admitted to us earlier today that he might have to come down himself a bit and wait to meet Hearns, but he would be willing to do that. And that is the fight that's out there. And I think Chez has surprised some people by getting this far and regaining a championship in another weight class. Hearns has five different weight classes himself, so that is the natural progression. After Bobby Chez pitched that shutout tonight, and the scorecards all agreed from the three judges at ringside, 120 to 108. So Bobby Chez retains his WBA Cruiserweight Championship in impressive form, throwing a lot of punches and doing the damage he had to do. Let's go to Cambrell Marshall for our ringside report.